Welcome to Mosse Cyber Security Institute's YouTube channel. My name is Benjamin Mosse and I'm the founder of the Institute. It's a pleasure to have you on our channel and today I'd like to share with you four reasons as to why antivirus and EDR products uh, fairly often do not catch adversary groups for many many years uh, and in fact they are a number of um, very well-known cases where some APT groups had their malware on in places like VirusTotal for three years, five years, seven years, and these samples were actually not detected uh, for, for that long. And so a lot of our customers often ask why, like how is it possible that companies that receive uh, millions of dollars uh, in funding or that are part of a massive uh, international conglomerates and uh, you know that have IT teams of hundreds of engineers how is it possible that adversaries manage to evade their product and so I'm going to share with you four reasons as to why that is and why that problem is not going to go away anytime soon um, number one most antivirus or EDR companies uh, as part of their statistics will share that they process and analyze in an automated fashion at least 300,000 new executable files per day and some of them even claim that they automatically analyze over a billion endpoint events per day. Now these numbers are just absolutely massive and a lot of the time if they just fail to catch a single one of those events or a single one of those binaries, well, the adversary behind that binary has actually won. So the problem that a lot of these companies face is that number one, they, just the sheer amount of files and events that they have to review every single day and never be wrong about is just too big, just absolutely too big. Reason number two that is really going to complement reason number one is that when you look at malware, the difference between malware and goodware or good files is actually not that big. Okay, if you think of a reverse shell, for example, well, what is a reverse shell? A reverse shell is a software that makes a reverse connection to the internet. It allows the operator to execute files on the machine, download files, and upload files. Well, if you had a, you know, a data set of known good files, and you hunted for binaries that have these four features, well, you would find most likely thousands of legitimate binaries that actually do these things. Uh, customers are also incredibly surprised to learn that plenty of legitimate software is obfuscated uh, because the authors of those software want to protect the source code so that their tools can't be stolen. And so we have a data set at Moses Security of about 100 gig worth of client files. And if we just look for files that looks like it's obfuscated because it's got a high level of entropy, well, I think we've got about over 10,000 legitimate files that we have found on customer networks that are actually obfuscated. And so all of this to say that, you know, what really is malware and what is goodware, the difference between the two is often very blurry unless the attackers are reusing code from an attack tool that's well known and we have a signature for that then at some point it will most likely require some level of human analysis some level of human labor to actually be able to tell the difference between what is legitimate and what is not um, the third reason and this is really one that boggles a lot of our uh, australian customers they just they just don't believe that things happen that way until they actually face such an event on their network. And that is that there is an attack strategy called living off the land. And what this strategy consists of is the, the attacker, once they've gotten into your network, they will take the time to understand how your IT engineers and system administrators manage the network and they're going to use the tools that your employees use to continue operating in the network meaning that they're not going to install any backdoors for long periods of time they're going to create legitimate user accounts 
If you're using VNC to manage your network, well, they'll grab the VNC password and they're going to use that. Uh, if you're using TeamViewer, then that's what they're going to use. If you're using whatever software you happen to use, recently we've seen customers affected by the Wipro breach, and supposedly the attackers were using a tool called Screen Connect, which is a legitimate binary. And guess what? We had customers that were legitimately using that, and that's what the attackers used to live off the land. And that just makes everything so much harder because, once again, how can you really tell what's the difference between, you know, Screen Connect or PS Exec or Team Viewer being used legitimately when your actual IT team members are using this software several times a day uh, for legitimate purposes? Um, now, there's another thing that uh, uh, really is. is too difficult for most organizations to deal with, and that is also supply chain attacks. And that is when the adversaries, well, they find out what software you use, they go hack the company that produces that software, and they just add a malicious function to the software, like a backdoor that does a reverse connection or something that adds a new local administrator to the machine. And, the, and once the, the backdoors have been planted, they just wait for that software to make its way into your environment and, you know, and remain that for long periods of time. And that is incredibly difficult to catch. And finally, the last strategy that attackers use that just allow them to win again and again, unfortunately, is that well, they find out what antivirus software you're using. They find out what EDR software you've used. Most likely, you, you know, some of your team members are probably advertising uh, on their LinkedIn profile, you know, what EDR software they've installed in your environment. Uh, maybe you've allowed one of the vendors to use your brand for marketing purposes. And so the bad guys find out what you have, how you're defending your network. And they go out and they buy these products, okay? A lot of these antivirus software and EDL products can be bought for a few hundred dollars online. And then they find bypasses, they do the research, and it is a bit time consuming, but if the payoff is there, then that's what they're going to do. And then once they have those bypasses, well, it's only a matter of just trying them against your environment. And chances are it will work. And so if you put all these strategies together of number one, there's so many files to process every single day. Number two, the difference between good and bad is very difficult to tell. Number three, the bad guys actually use legitimate software, the software you use to actually backdoor you. And number four, they figure out what security products you're using to defend your network and they find bypasses. That really explains to you why it is that these products consistently fail to catch adversaries in real time, or they only catch them you know, many, many years later, uh, you know, presumably when it is too late. Now, it is not to say that these products don't have value, but it is important to understand what they're good at and what they're not good at. And so, for example, if you were doing a compromise assessment of your network, well, I would not advise that you go and buy a major product to do this. Because chances are the adversaries would have looked at this product or thought about how they, they'd go about evading such a product. And so what you want to start to do is you want to start being unpredictable with some of your security defense activities. So that's just an, you know, one of the advice that I would give. Um, so thank you very much for uh, watching this video. Um, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button. We're publishing videos like this every week. It's a pleasure to have you on our channel and see you soon.